welcome to Women's Footy for NAB. I'm Bryony Dawson and I am joined again this week by Libby Birch. How are you, Birchie? Yeah, great. Thanks for having me back. Um, huge week this week for the Demons. You guys have come away with a couple of wins on the board. Yeah, it's been a fantastic week for the Ds. We flew in and out of Gold Coast and played Brisbane on Monday and then beat the Roos yesterday. So, yeah, a big week. Yeah, absolutely huge. And uh, it was Indigenous round this week. How special was it to put on the, the Indigenous Guernsey this week? Yeah, it was just amazing last night. I know you were there, Bryony, at the ground at Casey Fields. But to have the ceremony that we did and to acknowledge and respect the land on which we play on uh, for this great Australian game, it was just, it was beautiful. And it was something I'll never forget. And I think that everyone wants to be a part of this round. And the Guernseys are, are so beautifully designed by everyone that's a part of this community. And they have some wonderful stories behind them as well. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Lib. OK, well, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Women's Footy AFL. So jump on there and check us out. Let's go now to the round eight results for this round. We had the Cats were just too good over Richmond and you guys obviously got up against North yesterday at Casey Fields. And uh, it was one versus two as well uh, over at Fremantle Oval. Uh, Lib, I know you loved the Dockers for this one and I had Adelaide, but Adelaide were just too strong. And the Giants getting up over St Kilda in an absolute a thriller and a draw at Metricon Stadium there between the Suns and the Bulldogs. So let's get stuck into our news headlines for Nilex, experts in watering. So, Lib, the Ds move into second place with a win over the Roos yesterday. Yeah, it was terrific and great to get a good start. I think that that was one of the first games we really imposed ourselves as a team early on in the first quarter. And we did, were able to put some score on the board and that really set us up for the entire game. Whereas in previous matches, such as Brisbane, we were 20 points behind at half-time and had to crawl our way through. Yeah, it was, a, it was a huge effort against Brisbane. And, Lib, you actually you wrote an article during the week about uh, where you said the conditions the league plays in aren't exactly uh, ideal and that was on show again last night I guess at Casey Fields with the, the wind just playing an absolutely huge factor in the game. Yeah it was massive wasn't it and we can see from some of these highlights that pop up you know there were goals that were going to be goals and then just swayed completely out of bounds yeah. or, or they just missed the goals completely. This one probably would have been goal of the year and it was going through but just missed but yeah as we as I spoke about in the article it's about how can we best produce the best product? Yeah. And in conditions like this at Casey Fields, yes, it's fantastic community ground and we get so many fans out there. But there is a point where we, where we, if we are having a great game, we want it played on the best stadiums yeah. in the best environment possible. And I think the scores would have been completely different if we had been played in a protected arena. Yeah, so do you think it's time to move the games into Mar like somewhere like Marvel Stadium and your MCG and that kind of thing? I think there's got to be a balance because I think AFLW has been born in community places and suburban grounds and, yeah. and, and has been part of building that fan base and yeah. that momentum. So I think there's a real balance between that and then finding a way to, to show us off in stadiums. Uh, and next week's going to be a testament to that because there's a double header up at Optus Stadium. So yeah. that'll be terrific. Yeah, fantastic. All right, let's have a look. Adelaide make their premiership statement as well out in the West. They were fantastic out there yesterday. They were amazing. Again, their dominant midfield really thrashed Fremantle yeah. through that side. And I know the Fremantle coach was talking about in his press conference post-match that, yeah, it was a battle of the midfield. And again, Ed Marinoff and Hatchard starred with 30 disposals apiece. And Ponta uh, really kicked two goals in what was probably... They, they missed Erin, but yeah. she really stood up. And it was, it was sort of even in the first half, but they, in that second half, they just absolutely dominated and really stood up. Yeah, they had 43 inside 50 to 17, I believe, and just a really, really imposing team. And they loved to tackle. They loved to put pressure on sides. Uh, and they really battled it out at, at Fremantle Oval there, which is a really hard ground to play Fremantle at. And that's why I was so, so evident with you yeah. uh, a couple of weeks back that I thought Fremantle would get this win because it actually is a really difficult ground to play at. Yeah. And uh, midfield... Um, Weapons, Hatchard and Marinoff, again, dominated with 30 disposals each. Um, but arguably the most dangerous player on the field was uh, Danielle Ponta, who had 17 disposals and kicked two goals in a very brilliant display there. But as you can see here, that's second half. 
that statement, they smashed the clearances, they smashed contested possessions and the disposals. It was just, and more prominently, 20 more inside 50s. So they not only won the clearance battle, but they were able to keep it in their forward half for longer. Yeah, and Danielle Ponter as well, an absolute weapon who really had a fantastic game. As I said then, 17 disposals and the two goals as well. Let's have a look at these here. She's just got such poise. Pontara, and as you can see there, the, the classiness to put it to the right post with that win to carry it through the goals. But she's just such a powerful athlete and you've just got to, as a defender, it's so difficult to play on because she can really shift her hips and shake those tackles, which is uh, what's made her so good for so many years now. Yeah, she's absolutely fantastic. And Frio, I mean, they were they were gallant in defeat, um, but they were outplayed in the second half. But down back, Sarah Veria is generally a, a top player in the competition now, um, and her brilliant season is continuing. Yeah, she ran a, a NAB Rising Star Award uh, in round four, but she's been really valiant in defence here. Uh, but, yeah, really clean over the ball, classy, young player, 19 years old. So some really good sides for Fremantle going on. But I think what's... What they really missed yesterday was Bowers. So Bowers usually lays around 10 tackles. Yeah. And that was the thing that was missing yesterday, their defensive midfield structure. So I think Bowers was really, really something that uh, the Fremantle missed. And can Frio bounce back from this, do you think? I hope not, because we're playing them <laughs> next week. <laughs> Frio unable to bounce back against Melbourne. That'll be the top headline next week. All right, well, DeLong's first half absolutely blitzed mm. the Tigers yesterday. It was a, a huge effort by DeLong, wasn't it? Oh, terrific. And I think that they'll be most proud that they were able to, to start the game well. I know that their coach wanted second, uh, second quarter and third quarter efforts, which has been lacking. Their first quarters have been over okay but those next two haven't been so good and they just they just were I had four unanswered goals in that second yeah. term and as you can see here just a really fast start energy spirit their key forwards were up and about uh, and it was just a terrific game for Geelong and I think a full four quarter effort for them which is pivotal in their growth in AFLW. Yeah, and I think uh, the, the future's pretty bright down there at Cadinia Park, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. They've got really some two strong midfielders, Amy McDonald and Beck Webster, who are playing significant seasons, really consistent every week. But it was great to see Phoebe McW McWilliams kicking two goals again yeah. and being that target up forward, which is something I believe Geelong has been missing, that key target up forward. And then they had two really fantastic rucks all day in Darbs and Barbs. Darbs and, and Barbs. barbs. <laughs> and you can see... What the win meant as well to coach Dan Lowther. He sort of seemed in that press conference afterwards just a little bit relieved to get yeah, another win on the board, didn't he? Let's check it out. It must have been uh, a lot of work, hard work for this season. That must have been the, the, the fruits of the labour have, have come to the fore today. Yeah, it was good, Ryan. It was um, a long time coming between mm. uh, yeah. know, our first win, obviously. But uh, look, after watching the Tigers last week, just you know, we're electric against the Eagles. We knew this week was going to be a really tricky um, contest for us, but. You know, revisiting during the week and probably the last fortnight, just what works for us and shooting back what doesn't, um, just showed uh, showed today what um, what strengths the, the, the team possess, and that, that was enough tonight, or this afternoon, to um, start the game the right way and then to hold on for a half, which is scrappy, but it's still really positive. A little bit scrappy there, a little bit, but um, Geelong's pressure as well, I think, was outstanding. They had um, a whopping 78 tackles. Um, while having, uh, you know, 44 more disposals as well. And th that sort of really highlights uh, the efforts that the cat Cats made yesterday um, just to really put that pressure on and try and come away with the win. Yeah, and as you can see, they're forward 50 tackles as well, which makes sure that you can keep the footy in your forward half, which is really important for repeat inside 50s and to apply scoreboard pressure. And Lib, do you reckon, like, of the teams out of the, uh, the top six there, Geelong really do have an exciting future there with such a young team? Yeah, they certainly do. It's going to be really exciting the next couple of matches for Geelong because I do believe that they're winnable matches for them and they can really finish the season on a high. And they've been, you know, a bit inconsistent this yeah. year, but also uh, in the last previous years. So I think that they can really bounce from this win, particularly with Richmond playing so well last week against West Coast. Yeah. And to limit Richmond's scoring ability was something that was really pivotal. Yeah. 
All right, and GWS win an absolute thriller over the Saints. Wow, how good was that? Oh, it was amazing, wasn't it? And because both teams were struggling heading into this match, they'd both been beaten thoroughly in previous matches and had struggled to apply scoreboard pressure on teams. And it was a high scoring match, a very offensive one. And we're usually seeing this with sides like this, Saints and GWS being very offensive sides. So it wasn't very, a de it wasn't a de defensive game at all, but it was exciting to watch. Lots of scores on the board. And it came down to the absolute wire here with Smitty taking the mark and a 50 metre penalty being paid off the ball uh, on Shearlaw. And uh, to the commentators, uh, surprise. No one knew what the 50 metre was, yeah. was called for. Yeah. Uh, but Catherine Smith, uh, lifelong dream for field. <laughs> it, would, it would be a lifelong dream, wouldn't it, to kick the winning goal after it. And, and I guess we've seen 50 metre penalties just cost teams over and over again here. Do you think it's... Do we need to start stepping up and just saying, like, let's not have this undisciplined play at the moment? Yeah, I think, and, and as you can see here, it wasn't actually, I think a lot of people assume that it was BJ knocking the ball off City yeah. there, but it's Sheila in the background there on Parker. But, yes, 50 metre penalties in the women's game is extremely costly because it, it's, you're travelling. It's almost a goal. Uh, in women's footy. Yeah. Uh, it's coast to coast and in the, in this scenario, after the siren, it is an absolute coach killer. And I saw Nick Del Sano about two minutes earlier saying, kick boundary, kick boundary, kick boundary, because yeah. he really wanted to kill the game. Yeah. And unfortunately, sometimes that's the best way to learn, although it hurts. Yeah. I've had many times where you've made that mistake as a player, uh, whether it's, you know, a wrong decision in the last final minutes of a game. And it can cost your team, but that's how you learn the best. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, despite the heartbreak, uh, there were some positives for the Saints, however. Uh, First-year player Ashley Richards showing her some really some wonderful glimpses um, of talent. How did you see her game yesterday? Yeah, terrific. Really, really strong aerial game from Richards. And just being your presence up forward, I think, has been really important for St Kilda because they have been very reliant on Greiser and Shearloff as marking targets. Yeah. Uh, but to have a young like Richards taking good contested marks like that has been uh, terrific. It's been terrific to see. Uh, and I think you're going to mention, Bryony, I'll jump in ahead of you, but Xenos. Yeah, she had a great game, didn't yeah. she? Yeah. Electric. Yeah. She's come back, obviously, from an ACL, and she can just absolute whip around stoppages. And she's speedy. She's clever around goals. And as a defender, you have to be on top of your game against Xenos. But just... Oh, she just should be so proud about how she's bounced back from injury and being a year out of the game. Because it's yeah. always, must be nerve-wracking to come back after a year of being out of the game. Yeah, and still just to play that, that sort of exciting footy as well, I think is, is really important. Um, can the Saints win a game this year? Libby Birch. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely think they can. Yeah. yeah. I think they were so close. They would have been absolutely devastated yeah. by that because that would have been a terrific win yeah. against the Giants. They scored well and they were there to the very end and just extremely unlucky to, to not get the win on the board. But I think the way that they're playing and the way that they're building across the season, I do believe they can get a win. Excellent. Well, that was the news headlines. Thanks to Nilex. Recycled water hoses, water like a Nile expert, available at Bunnings. Coming up... GWS's Catherine Smith after the break. We're going to talk to her about that goal. Turn it up, turn it up, come on, turn it up. It's Barr. Goes boundary side instead of corridor. Morfitt. She's got a thumping boot. She's going to have to load up from here. She does. Where's Staunton? Oh. It's Cat Smith. This will be the last chance. Where's Staunton? She wants it inside 50. It's going to go in that direction, but it's going to be potentially... 50, free kick or a 50. We're holding free kick. Oh. It's a 50 metre penalty. So it's going to go to Cat Smith. We're going to try and see what that was for. But Cat Smith to win the game. For the GWS Giants, there's the siren. She's kicked it. The Giants, they win it after the siren. That's heartbreak for the young Saints. And the Giants, they snatch victory.
Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB, who are giving away $10,000 to a local footy club. Simply scan the QR code on the screen or visit nab.com.au forward slash footy is back to enter. Well, we've got her on the line now. Welcome, Catherine Smith. How you doing? I'm good, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on the show. What a... What a huge effort that was. It was the first time in AFLW history that somebody has kicked a game-winning goal after the siren. How do you feel? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty amazing. Um, like, you dream of it as a kid um, and for it to happen was really cool. And I think for it to happen for a pretty significant moment for our footy club um, it was awesome. And you see the celebrations, it meant a lot to all the girls playing, all the girls on the bench and all the staff had been involved. So, yeah, it was an amazing moment. And we saw um, before you took uh, before you took the kick, uh, you did look a little bit nervous. But Cora Thornton <laughs> handed you the footy. She handed you the footy. What did she say to you? Uh, she asked if I was confident and if she wanted to go past for the hands, which is fair enough because like Cora is an amazing goal scorer. <laughs> but I was pretty aware of where we were at in terms of time. So I was like, no, nah, I need to kick this because this is the last kick of the game. Yeah. Um, there was no giving her hands off there. But um, yes, yeah, awesome for Cora to be able to just kind of recognise that and ask that question. Out of interest, Smitty, uh, well, obviously we're previous teammates, but did you know in that moment why there was a 50 metre penalty? Because uh, it looked like, you know, even the commentators in that moment wasn't sure. And you obviously took a brilliant mark in that final 10 seconds. And you had five St Kilda players around you, mind, mind you. So uh, did you know what, what had happened? Or did you just, just go along with the moment and, and was like, I'm just <laughs> going to kick this goal and win it? <laughs> um. I wasn't aware of what, like, I didn't see the incident, but they, the umpires kept talking about parks behind the ball. So I knew something happened with parks behind the ball. And initially my thought was something around the protected area on the mark. Um, but then, yeah, once the umpire said something about Parker, then I was like, something happened behind me that I did not see. And then afterwards, it's pretty clear um, when you look back on the tape. So. Yeah, I feel like most players wouldn't be like, why the 50 metres? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just going to take it and kick the game and go. Yeah. Uh, so it must have been good to, to finally get a win on the board as well um, after, a, you know, a rough couple of games. Yeah, definitely. Um, that was going in my head. I was like, I do not want to lose again. So I was like, Smitty, you kick this. Like, I'm not, not letting us lose again. So, um, yeah, it was a great moment um, for us. And, yeah, um, a lot of hard work and throughout the game had made sure that we were in that position to be actually win the game. So credit to all the girls. Over the last couple of weeks, Smitty, you've had some tough matches and you really sometimes been struggling to score, but Cora Stoughton kicked three goals, Nick Barr and yourself kicked a goal each. Uh, how, what was McConnell's focus going into this game against St Kilda? Yeah, definitely a little bit of a change in terms of the ball, mo ball movement going inside forward 50, like just giving the forwards a bit more opportunity to score. Um, obviously, if the ball's not inside our forward 50, then it's harder to score. Um, so a little bit of a change there, but... Um, yeah, I think it was a credit to the forwards that they competed hard all day and, um, like, Cora, amazing to the kick three goals. And Barzi's had an incredible few weeks up forward and has really owned her position as a forward. So um, just giving the forwards more opportunity was basically the the, um, the aim. And Parker and Eva have been such consistent performers in the, midfielders, in the midfield all year. Parker had 21 and 9 clearances and Eva 22 and 10 tackles. And they really marry nicely, Parker kind of more of the attacking mid and, and Eva more of the defensive mid. How What is it like playing alongside those two and how do they help the team? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, when I initially came to the footy club, I guess a lot of the draw was to play alongside Alicia Eva. Um, she's a great leader on her own right and, like you just said, 10 tackles, um, leads for them front and Parker... She's just elite, like one of the best contested ball winners you can have in the competition um, and the way that she... Um, just wins the ball and is able to use it is really cool. So um, have those two people around you. It just makes you a better footballer and um, they lead from the front. Um, there's no other way to say it, really. And you're playing Carlton today as well. What's What do you have to do in the preparation to get over the line there and, and shut down their, some of their superstars? Yeah, obviously they're a very talented um, football club with a lot of individuals, um, but real key focus on us winning our own contested ball, um, making sure it's a 1v1, that's your opportunity to impact um, and then go from there. Um, real focus on, once again, just the way we're playing football. There's been a lot of growth in the way we've played football this year and kind of our ball use and our ball movement. So um, real focus on us, but obviously being aware of when you have some players like Darcy Vestia and Maddie Parkers and Georgia D that you have to just be aware of um, them around the field and 
um, making sure that we put high pressure on them when they have the ball. Smitty, you've been such a prominent player in AFLW and, and I was privileged to, to play alongside you at the D's and uh, we miss you, Smitty. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I wanted to ask about, you know, you, you spoke about having the dream as, a, as an Oz kicker to kick the goal after the siren, but I when you were growing up playing footy, I, I heard that you, you played against some of the boys, uh, Jordan Ridley, one of them. Uh, what was that like? Can you, can you give us a bit of an insight into how you got into footy and, and how you've got to this point? Yeah, um, basically my older, my older brother's two years older. He went to Auskick, so I followed him around. It was probably a bit of a pest um, and just fell in love with the game there. Mum and Dad got involved with Auskick and then and the progression was to play your local junior footy club, so Blackburn Junior Footy Club. Um, played with the boys up until um, you're too old to play with the boys. Um, was lucky enough to actually captain the boys stayed, um, boys yeah, wow. team, which was an amazing experience and um, just was pretty incredible. Um, but yeah, played along against those type of players, which is awesome looking back. And the boys always had a lot of respect for me and there was no issue with me playing in the boys team or opposition had a lot of respect. And um, I guess when I got drafted, a few of the players that I either played with or um, played against in the boys um, system actually reached out and congratulated me. Um, so that was something that was, oh, I guess, really nice um and then for great from there I was lucky enough to have like youth girls and Vic Metro and um the NAB league to be involved in so that when I was 18 I was um pr fully prepared in that elite environment to be able to be drafted and DWS have got uh, a pretty favorable draw for the rest of the season um if there's a mathematical possibility that you guys can make finals if you uh win the next three rounds um do you guys think you can do it uh, for sure. Um, oh, I, we, want, we want to make finals. Um, there's no secret about that. I think as a footballer, you want to win a premiership. That's why we play. We want to win. Um, but obviously, there are still really hard opposition that we have to go up against. And every week, um, you just got to focus on tonight and then we'll reset and focus on Richmond and then Geelong. Um, and knowing that every team is good in their own right in the AFLW competition, you can never go into a game thinking you're going to win. Um, when you do that, it doesn't fall your way. So um, <laughs> you definitely got to prep um, hard. And I think there's a real concentration on the way that we're going to play and um, what we can control. All right, Catherine, thanks for joining us today and best of luck for the rest of the season. Uh, you're not going home empty-handed either. All guests on Women's Footy take home a Samsonite luggage package where there's live sport. Samsonite is there too. For innovative travel and business solutions, visit samsonite.com.au. The Second Avenue Grocer is a valued NAB customer and is a marketplace for fresh seasonal produce, rare cheeses and hand-sliced meats, specialty pantry items plus pl plenty of inspiration for your next meal located in the heart of Altona and also available online at secondavgrocer.com.au. A Spinal Ease pillow, the best pillow in the world, is at spinalease.com.au and a $50 McCafe gift card. Try the Aussie Angus Burger at Macca's today. Well, coming up after the break, it's Melbourne's Lily Miffin. Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB. We are here at the McCafe. Try a deluxe iced coffee at McCafe today. Thank you, Nadia. This is delicious. I'm going to have a little sip here. You take the screen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, we have a Melbourne superstar with us, Lily Miffin. Welcome, Lily. Thanks, Ronnie. Good morning, Liz. Hey, Lil. How are you? <laughs> Yeah, good. I'm, uh, I'm desperate for a coffee. I'm, I'm jealous that you're having your sit there, Brani. It's of a delicious. Of delight. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. It's a McCafe. Did we mention that? <laughs> Absolutely delightful, delicious almond latte there. Thank you, Nadia. Hey, Lily, um, a massive game for you yesterday. Um, incredible. 28 disposals. And with that, can I tell you that you are our Snaffle AFL MVP nomination for round eight. Congratulations. You can cast your vote at the AFLPA.com.au. Let's have a look at some of these highlights here. Lily Miffin. Did it feel like it was a huge game, mate? Uh, yeah, it was. Um, I love playing against North Melbourne. and I think we always match up against them really well. Um, we played a few Friday, uh, Saturday nights against them out at Casey Fields, and it's really good fun playing uh, under lights. So 
um, obviously the result was exhilarating. Sort of left uh, the last quarter for it to be a bit of a heart racer, really, and, and really had to defend and make sure we could uh, make sure we kept the result and took home the four points. But um, no, nah, it was a, it was a really great night, and I thought the girls put in a great performance across all four quarters. And um, yeah, I'm just loving playing with the girls at the moment. Libs Libs making the ground super secure at back, so it's uh, <laughs> nice just to be able to. Playing the midfield, knowing that you've got uh, great support behind you. Lil, just looking at your highlights there, it's it's very clean football that you're playing. You, you've been through the wing, the midfield and up forward at times this year. What have you really brought uh, to the Ds this year? What have you tried to bring during pre-season and, and to the start of this season? Yes, um, I think that I've been a midfielder sort of all my life. So um, to be able to play midfield, I'm a... I'm a contested player, but I think the biggest thing that um, has elevated my game in more recent times is my skill execution. I think that um, my kick's gotten a lot better, especially over the this preseason, and, and I consider myself a really good kick that sets up a whole lot of our offense. So I think that combined with, yeah, obviously I've played a long time, so I like to think I know the game pretty well, and I'm a very competitive person, as you'd know, Liz, and <laughs> don't like to get beaten and like being around the footy. So I guess that will and want to compete as uh, as well as that sort of cool mind in high-pressure situations and to be able to use the footy to create o offensive scoring chains is uh, something that I think I've added uh, to my game this year. And um, hopefully uh, the likes of Taylor and Days and Cato up forward are, are sort of reaping the benefits. They definitely are. Yeah, I think, I think they are, mate. Absolutely. OK, well, that was our vote for the AFL PA MVP of the week, thanks to snaffle.com.au. So, Lily, you've had a, a great game yesterday as well, but I want to talk about um, Paxi as well because she is having an absolutely ripper season. She's just everywhere. She looks fierce. She's strong at the ball and she's just setting up a lot of, uh, a lot of great play as well. Definitely, yeah. Couldn't have said it better. Pax is a running machine. She's the heart and spirit of, of this side. And, um, yeah, her game yesterday was phenomenal. The way she attacked the footy, her contest game was brilliant. But then just to keep fronting up at stoppage and, and do the right things in the right moment, I think, was crucial with Pax's game yesterday. She knew when to create a bit of flair and uh, really get offence going. And then she also just steadied the ship and took the ball forward or locked the ball up in the contest. So Paxi's game was brilliant and um, it was uh, it was nice. I'm not sure how much you've spoken about Indigenous Realm already this morning, but um, KP, Crystal Petrensky, uh, one of the girls in our side, she got a family member back home at Halls Creek, uh, far north uh, WA, to do a painting that represented um, seven strong... Indigenous sisters. It's a Dreamtime story back, back in their sort of native land, and um, did a painting that represented that, and and it was awarded to the best of ground player, which will now be a tradition going forward. And now Indigenous Round and Paxi won that award, which I think was a very deserving winner of a really special award, thanks to uh, KP and I guess uh, the Indigenous Round. It's such a special round to celebrate culture and um, I guess also to learn and educate ourselves about what Indigenous round means because there's obviously still a long way to go. Yeah, very well said, Lil. It was a really special moment for the club and for KP and, and for Pax as well. What do you think, obviously we've improved as a team over the last couple of weeks, but where do you think the, the most amount of improvement will come? We're obviously not done yet. We weren't satisfied with the win last night. We want to keep going, keep pushing for, for more. Where do you think, where do you see us improve over the next couple of weeks? I think, um, I think our start was a really positive step forward this week. We haven't started games super well. So I think that was something that we, um, we need to continue to work on. Um, but it was really pleasing to see us fix that uh, last night. But I think the improvement comes just the, that level of consistency. There's obviously going to be ebbs and flows in games and momentum shifts. But we need to be probably quicker at when another team sort of got the ascendancy on us just to really pull that back as soon as what as soon as possibly can. And uh, I think last night our defenders, uh, you leading the charge, really saved us in a lot of critical moments. Um, but it needs to start sort of further up the ground. And um, I think 
us as mids sometimes getting beaten around the ball a bit too often, um, which is going to happen, of course, because we're playing against great oppositions and great sides. And, and there's going to be times next week against Frio when um, the likes of Bells and, and her guys are going to uh, take the lead on us yeah. about how quickly we can bring that back and how quickly we can win the forward and, and come back to our style of play, I think is where our improvement comes. And Lily, um, if I can just touch on Taylor for a second. She's been a massive signing for you guys and she just looks uh, so dangerous up forward and just really strengthens that forward line for you guys. How good is she? It's, really, it's <laughs> actually ridiculous. Bryony, you're there on, on, on match days out of Casey and I'm sure you just get as excited as what I do watching her. Yeah, it's amazing. Whether you're, whether you're working, whether you're um, playing with her, whether you're supporting, she's just such a talent and there's just not many players in the league or if any player that competes in the air yeah. like she does it's um and then her ability to convert that goal there that you're just watching the way that she swung that in the wind she's having a phenomenal season and um I just love playing with her and no, it's it is flashy what she's doing but she's not making it flashy she's just making it sort of stock standard Taylor behavior where she cra crashes the pack whether she marks it whether she takes it to the ground she's playing her role brilliantly and uh, the the impact she's had on the group has been immense and, um, yeah, another really strong forward from her last night. And, uh, yeah, she's coming into great form at the back end of the year, which is uh, ideal for us. Absolutely. Um, Lily, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, up after the break, we're going to have a Geelong captain, Meg McDonald. Stick around. Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB, supporting footballers from NAB AFL Auskick to the big time. We're very excited to be joined now by Geelong skipper Meg McDonald. Meg, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Brian. Hey, Liv. Um, thanks for having me on. What a huge, huge day for you guys yesterday. It was a fantastic performance, four quarters of footy, and you've come away with the win. Yeah, a really significant day for us yesterday. Winnings... Um, Winning has been rare for us for a little while now, so so it's always awesome to walk away with the four points. But, you know, more excitingly, you know, we played a brand of footy that we can be proud of and that we've tried to we've tried to achieve since the beginning of the beginning of the season. It was good to get back to that yesterday and to have success off the back of it with, you know, a bunch of individually individually great performances along the way. Meg, oh, what I want to know is what was uh, the meaning going into that match? You know, you started so well. It was you were on top of Richmond in the first and second quarter, the second quarter particularly with four unanswered goals. What was what was the feeling around the team? What did you want to achieve in those first couple of quarters? Yeah, thanks, Liv. Um, look, we've started well the past couple of weeks, really. It's, the first 10 minutes hasn't been the issue for us. It's been the middle sections of the game where we've sort of um, stepped away from who, who we are. And we had the we, we had the um, great luck of playing Richmond at, at Punt Road in our practice game. And that was a game where we, you know, we ran out with our, our new sort of game plan and new focuses for the first time. And those are, you know, pressure on the ball, spoiling in all the one percenters that we speak about in footy. Yeah. We know that if we push put pressure on the ball, then we'll um, we'll take opposition's game games away from them. And you know, our focuses were to bring that back into our game and then to spread the ground and set it up the way we the way that's best for us to play footy off the back of that. And, you know, it's been difficult to play that brand of footy recently because we haven't had the ball in our hand as much. So to make sure that, you know, we, we took the ball away from them, had pressure on the ball and set up well, we knew that it, you know, we knew that it would go well off the back of that. And it did. It was a tricky first quarter, but um, the goals flowed in the second, which is, which is awesome for us. And how good was Rebecca Webster yesterday? She had 20 disposals and a goal. Yeah, my girl Becky Webb. She's, um, <laughs> you know, she's a cliche. She's a, such a barometer for us, and she took, you know, she really stepped up in a leadership capacity during the week and got the group together during training and spoke about the importance of the last three games, but also just, you know, how much fun we have playing footy together and when we're we're best at when we're at our best is, you know, when we're really when we're really connected and in, enjoying each other. That's where when our um, intensity's up and. For her to say that during the week and then to back it up with her own performance just, you know, shows her growth and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about her and, and the way she's, um, you know, 
the way she's playing and she's the way she's continuing to improve each week because I think that's that's where our improvement as a whole group will come from when players like um, like Becky go to the next level. Yeah, well, we spoke about Becky, but also I'm really loving Amy McDonald. She's been a super consistent midfielder all year as well. And I heard your coach say that, that Beck and Amy are actually really good friends. How do you see them, you know, they work so well together on the field. How do you think that off-field relationship helps them? Yeah, well, you know as well as I do that when you when you invest in relationships off the field, I mean, you can only benefit from and on it. I think, and they for a number of years now, those two girls have um, had a great friendship. They're both country Vic girls, and we've got a lot of girls from the country down at Geelong, and um, you know, they're they're wonderful people, and they love spending time with each other, and uh, you know, that means that they can they recognise each other's strengths on the field, and you know, they're. They're really well connected. Becky's such a fantastic, you know, kick of the ball. Her power on the outside is awesome. And Becky puts everyone through the spin. Sorry, Amy puts everyone through the spin cycle. And um, you know, her her A one game is pretty um, pretty impressive. So those two are, are continuing to push each other and grow together. And um, that's something that's exciting for the team. The longer we play together, the better we um, get to know each other and and you know, play better footy together. And your teammate as well, Chantal Emmonson, uh, she moved from Melbourne last year and was brilliant in setting the tone with her pressure and one percenters as well. That's why she is our Trade of the Year nomination for Round 8, thanks to Imar Insurance, the tradies mate. Yeah, Shani, um, another country Vic girl. They're just, they're so good. <laughs> um, great nomination. No, Shan has been such an awesome addition to the team, on field and, and off. She's, um, you know, I, I was... I think I've said to Liv before that she's come from Melbourne and that's a, a team that knows how to win and that's something that we're trying to learn. And um, Shan's just bringing that consistency week in, week out. Um, you know, we had a focus, as I said earlier, on the on the one percenters of the game and Shan sets the tones with her smothers each week, her tackles. And then we love getting the ball in her hands because she's such a good, she's such a good, um, she's got such a good kick, really. So, um, as much as we can, we're trying to get Shan up and around the footy and um, her leadership off the field has been wonderful as well. She's really setting the tone and I think her influence on the group is only going to continue to grow. Well, that was the IMAR Insurance Trade of the Year nominee for Round 8. The Trade of the Year will win $2,500 thanks to IMAR. Get an online quote and instant cover anywhere, anytime. Visit imar.com.au. You can also call them uh, by calling them on 13IMAR. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, uh, Meg. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on here as always. Uh, thanks for having me. I keep coming on after a win. Hopefully I'm on every, every week from now on. <laughs> we hope so too. All right, as we head to the break, let's take a look at the AFLW Rising Star nominees from Round 7. Thanks to NAB, supporting footballers from NAB AFL Auskick to the big time. <laughs>
Welcome back to Women's Footy. Thanks to NAB. I'm going to throw it over to Libby Birch now down at the big plasma for the analyzer for Pillar Products Roller Blinds exclusively at Bunnings. We're going to take a look at the, the Saints' uh, poor game management here in the final uh, seconds of their loss to GWS. Lib, take us through it. Well, we have 32 seconds left here. BJ has the ball. We, I want to see BJ kick that more boundary side because that will allow all these St Kilda players here to set up 1v1 and also the possibility for it to go over the boundary line. Now here, we don't have an aerial contest. We miss this tackle. And as we play on here, Jazz goes through the middle of the ground. Again, because we haven't set up 1v1, there is opportunity for the Giants to play through the middle of the ground. Again, another mark. And this is from the fact that all of St Kilda's numbers have gone down into the offensive 50. And here we see five St Kilda players surrounding this ball. Now, credit to Catherine Smith here for taking this mark. But this should really be thumped over the boundary line here. So we have three or four opportunities to kill this game. Seven seconds. And even here, if the 50 wasn't given away, we could have still gotten that win for St Kilda. It would have been their first win of the season and really important. But they should be going over this 30-second tape with Nick Del Sano over across the week to make sure they learn from it for next time. Thanks, Lib. That was the analyzer. Thanks to Pillar Products, who have you covered inside and out. Shutters, roller blinds, window, film exclusively for Ad Bunnings. All right, let's take a look now at the goal of the week for Underworks. Serious about sport. It was Sarah Perkins. She kicked a massive long range bomb for the Gold Coast on Tuesday night. Let's take a look at it here. She is outside the arc and she just goes. Bang, gets shepherded through and it's absolutely, that is a huge, huge goal of the week. Absolutely fantastic. Underworks knows Aussies are serious about sport. That's why they're rewarding Grassroots Club with a new pair of Underworks sports socks for every single player. Fantastic. All right, after the break, we are going to check out the games coming up later today. Welcome back to Women's Footy. Thanks to NAB. There are four huge games on today. Lib, let's check them out. St Kilda versus the Suns, uh, Magpies, Bulldogs, Eagles, Lions, uh, Giants and Carlton. Who do you like? I'm liking this Collingwood Bulldogs setup. up It's Deanna Berry's first game since being back from an ACL. Fantastic. It's a huge, huge day for footy. Thanks for joining us on Women's Footy. Thanks to you, Lib, and we'll catch you next time.